How's it going guys? Welcome back to a video on Code Tech and Tutorials. Today I want to show you all something that I found that is uh, super super cool. And I'm not the first person to cover it and it's Diligent Engine. Now what this is is actually a set of renders for pretty much every OS. So I just went ahead and did a search there. And uh, give me a sec while I bring it over. Okay. And what we see here is uh, the the top hit is their actual site. So we'll just go there. That sounds good. And there's some words about it. And I'll just read this real quick as an intro. Diligent Engine. Diligent Engine is a lightweight cross-platform graphics API abstraction library. It is designed to take full advantage of direct 3D12, Vulkan, and Metal, while supporting older platforms via direct 3D11, OpenGL, and OpenGLES. Diligent Engine exposes common front-end API and uses HLSL as a universal shading language on all platforms and rendering backends. Platform-specific shader representations, GSL, DX, Bytecode, or SPUR-V, can be used with corresponding backends. The engine is intended to be used as a graphics subsystem in a game engine or any other 3D application. Full source code is available on GitHub. It is distributed under the Apache 2 license and is free to use. Wow. Okay, so let's just go ahead and uh, jump right to GitHub and take a look. So now what I want to do is basically just show you how you can run this. Anyone can run this. It's free. It's open source. So if you're learning and studying 3D or coding, this is an excellent thing to study. Probably one of the best things you can do. It's going to be better than going to any class, probably. You know, everybody's different. But I think anybody who uh, wants to learn should just jump in. So we're going to go ahead and clone it and do it and do the thing. And I'll run it for you. So the first thing we're going to do is just copy this clone. And then we're going to open Fork for our GitHub access. And I've already cloned it. And what I did is, is I just went to File, Clone, and then just hit Clone. I made sure I put it where I wanted it to be in the parent board folder. So do that if you need to. So since I've already cloned it, it's just right here. And I have the latest version. And if they make any updates, I can just open Fork and do a pull on the master. And if I see something cool I want to fix, I can. But, uh, you know, that's GitHub. So now that we have it, uh, we're just going to go to its directory. I don't think that Fork has a way to do that. It would be really cool if it did. Can we? No, I don't see the way to do it. There might be. but So we're going to close Fork now that we've got it forked. And we're just going to go straight to CMake. So we're launching CMake here, and I've already done this too. So basically what you want to do, I'll go ahead and just uh, clear it though. I'll do delete cache. So basically you browse to the source. So I went to uh, where I had it stored. Source, repos, diligent engine. Okay. And then, so that's where you want to browse source to is just the root of it. And build, well, Everybody does this differently. I, from the root, hit new folder and made a build folder and then went into that. Uh, that's what I like to do. But it's wherever you want to build all the objects and stuff when you compile the code. So then we just basically hit generate here and we're using Visual Studio 16 2019. So this is Visual Studio Community Edition 2019. And no changes here, use default native compilers and we'll let it do its thing. And it'll give us all the message that their CMake has set up. And it looks like right here, they tell you what your platform supports. So as you can see, we support everything but GLS, uh, GLES, and Metal. Well, Metal's for, uh, what am I trying to say? Metal's for Apple stuff, and GLES is for mobile. So we're on a Windows desktop, so that's why we've got these here. All right, so now that it's all done, it said generating done, gave us some more messages about SPUR-V, finding Git, and we're just gonna go ahead and hit open project since everything completed with no errors. And that will open Visual Studio 2019. And this is actually it, and we don't see anything because 
uh, it's off to the side. So let's just um, look at it. All right, so collapse everything here. And it looks like they've got a whole bunch of solutions within this project for Visual Studio. They've got asteroids, which I assume is some kind of example. There's Unity. They've got tools, samples, FX, and a core. And these are all individual projects. I'm guessing they have most of them built as static libraries. I'm not really sure. We could look though. Yeah, this is a static library. So that means other projects within this can link to it. That's a DLL. So if you, you can, you can, in case you don't know, if you're making libraries within Visual Studio, you can link to them with your other projects. And well, there's so much you can do. I'm not going to go over all that. But basically what we can do is we can find any of these that are executables, such as, um, I think this GLTF viewer is, all these samples are probably executables because they're examples of how to run it. That one's an executable. This atmosphere, let's take a look at it. Also an executable. So all these samples are probably going to be executables. So what you can do if you want to run any of them, is you can right click on it and do set a startup project. It starts off with this GLTF viewer, but we could switch it to other ones by going like so, and then just hitting play. If you want to change these, you can, but I'm just leaving it default for the sake of simplicity here. So this is the default one. I'm going to go ahead and show you that real quick. So we're going to set it as a startup project, hit build, let it do its thing. It's going to take a moment. And it pops up a window and it, it asks us what backend we want to use. So we can use Vulkan GL DirectX. 12 or 11. So that's super cool. It's only using three megabytes of memory. Let's choose, let's choose Vulkan. So I clicked Vulkan there and it looks like it's starting to load stuff. As you can see, the memory is, is chunking up there. And there we are. Bring that back up. Okay. Just want to be able to see those meters on the side. So it looks like it gives us a helmet and some nice, nice lighting. And there are other models we can choose here. And we can change the light direction. And this is a model rotation. And here's all the other settings you can do. So this is just that first demo. It looks like they've got all kinds of cool stuff going on. All right, so all kinds of little tests with the lighting. And yeah, so you can really get a good look at your object with all these different rendering techniques. Transparency looks like that. Okay. Base color, mesh normals, specular, IBL. That looks really nice. Diffuse IBL. Ooh, that looks kind of cool too. So there's just so much to play around with here. So let's close this one and um, let's run Asteroids. I'm going to go ahead and set the Asteroids as a startup project. Looks like it's all on its own, just at the very bottom. So it might be like a little bit of an Easter egg extra thing that somebody was just doing or the developer was just doing. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll hit build. I assume we're going to get some asteroids going on. Looks like it's doing some, yeah, it's just showing us everything it's building here. Creating 1000 meshes. Okay. So it did some stuff and it is literally just asteroids going across a asteroid like sky or skybox. What is it, a belt? Oh, I can zoom out and I can see it. It's like an asteroid belt. Oh, that's super cool. I thought it was going to be like a remake of the Asteroids game or something, but this is super awesome too. So it tells us what happened here and what it's doing. Very cool. And that's uh, performing decently for that many objects. Okay, so that's basically a thousand objects all moving. That's, that's not too bad for a thousand objects moving. All right, so that's pretty much it. So, so you can uh, use these examples I've showed you here. If you have any questions, let me know below. Let me know if you're able to get it to run. And uh, let me know what you take away from this. This is, wow. I, I'm overwhelmed with how cool this is, so I just had to share. All right, take it easy, you guys. Stay safe, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.